My name is Jasmine Florentine. I'm a mechanical engineer and designer, and I love making robots. I love bots so much, I want to talk about them all the time. I also love making bad puns, if you couldn't tell. One of the tools I use to make robots is the micro bit, which I'm kind of obsessed with. There's a ton of things you can make with the micro bit besides robots, from night lights to intruder alarms to games. That's why I'm here to tell you about the Do Your Bit Challenge. It's a competition that asks you to come up with and submit your ideas for how you can achieve the UN Global Goals. First things first, what are the UN Global Goals? Also known as the Sustainable Development Goals, these are 17 different goals that leaders from around the world agreed on that are meant to improve the lives of people, the health of the planet, and generally to make the world a better place. The goals cover everything from ending poverty and hunger to making sure all genders are treated equally to fighting climate change. Instead of me listing all 17 goals and you falling asleep, I recommend pausing now to watch this awesome introductory video to learn more all about the global goals. The global goals cover a lot of challenges in the world. Where do you even get started? That's where the Do Your Bit Challenge comes in. Let's talk a bit about the Do Your Bit Challenge. Okay, that was a bad pun, even for me. It's a competition hosted by Microbit for kids aged 8 through 18. Each year, the challenge focuses on two different global goals. You can learn more about the specific rules and the deadline at the Do Your Bit page on Microbit's website. In a nutshell, the challenge is to come up with a project that helps reach this year's global goals. Depending on your age, you can submit the project as an idea that you write and draw out to explain, or you can actually build the project using the Microbit. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause again to do an activity, but let me explain it first. If you don't already know what the global goals for this year's challenge are, go online to the Microbit website to find out. Next, talk to your friends and classmates about why you think these goals are important. There's no right or wrong answers here. The goals are really big, so they might have different meanings to different people. Take goal 14, life underwater. If I was an octopus, this would be really important to me because I'd live underwater. But since I'm not an octopus, obviously, it's important to me for other reasons. Like, I don't want to see the coral reefs go extinct during my lifetime. I would have all kinds of sad emotions. Here's the rule about the activity. You can't say the same thing that anyone else in your group has already said, which might make it a bit more of a challenge if you're going last, but you're creative. I trust you. All right, you can pause now. Okay. So now that you know what the global goals are for the Do Your Bit Challenge for this year, how do you come up with an idea and use the micro bit to build it into a project? You may already have some ideas or you may not be sure where to start. This is where the engineering design process comes in handy. This process is used by designers, engineers, makers, inventors, entrepreneurs, mad scientists, really anyone who is trying to solve a difficult problem. Coming up with a new product, invention, or idea can be hard. It's like you're coming up with something out of nothing, and there's no real instructions or right or wrong answers. The engineering design process makes it more manageable by breaking it down into parts that are easier to handle. There are different versions, but this is the process that I use as an engineer and product designer. It goes something like this. The first step in the process is actually defining the problem we want to solve. In this case, we know we want to solve the problems related to the UN Global Goals. But those goals are really big and cover a lot. Like, how am I supposed to end climate change for everyone on the planet? I'm just one person. The good news is, I don't have to. Instead, we want to focus on a specific problem. So instead of saying climate change is a problem, we can focus on one part of that problem that we want to fix. Like, it's a problem that I use too much electricity. The next step is ideation. That means coming up with ideas to solve the problem you defined. This is where you get to go crazy and come up with as many ideas as you can think of. For instance, what are some ideas for how I can use less electricity? 
Maybe I could make a bicycle-powered computer, or an alarm that shouts at me whenever I leave the lights on, or attach a solar panel to my clothes, or use pigeons to send messages instead of email, or stop using a refrigerator and only eat candy bars, or build a window on my roof, or stop watching TV, or use a campfire instead of a microwave. You get the point. After ideation, you'll have a whole bunch of ideas. Some are going to be amazing. Some are going to be less amazing. Prototyping is when you actually get to build, code, or make your ideas to see if they work. For instance, I might build a machine that plays a really annoying song whenever I forget to turn off the lights. Whoops, I left my lights on. I'll be right back. Once I've built the prototype, I need to test it. First, I need to see if it actually works. Going back to my example of a light turning off reminder machine, that means making sure that it sings at me when it's supposed to. Second, I need to test if people will actually want to use it. Which they may not want to. The third part of testing is making sure that it actually solves the problem that I defined. I wanted to use less electricity, but if this machine also uses electricity, it may not actually solve the problem. So what happens then if the prototype doesn't work the way I want? That's fine. That means we go back to the prototyping stage or even back to the ideation stage. This is called iterating, and it basically means going back and trying again. One thing I love about engineering and design is not only is it okay to fail, but it's actually part of the process. The trick is to learn from why something failed so you can make it better next time. The process I described so far was a straight line, but it actually looks more like this. And that's because a lot of design is just about trying things, messing up, and trying again. Almost nothing I make works the first time, or the second time, or the ninth time, or the tenth time. Now, I just went through a lot of this really fast, but in the next few videos, we'll go through in more detail and see how you can use the engineering design process to come up with a project for the Do Your Bit Challenge. By the end, you'll have a project ready to submit. One last thing you'll want a notebook for the rest of the videos. This is your design notebook, and it's one of the most important tools you can have. It's where you keep all your research, your ideas, any bit of inspiration that strikes you. Here's an example of one of my design notebooks. You can see it's a mixture of words and drawings, but you should do whatever works for you. It doesn't even need to be a physical notebook. You can record notes to yourself with audio, write it on a computer, stick sticky notes to your face, Whatever works for you. The point isn't to create a beautiful, perfect piece of art, but just a way to capture your ideas. Believe me, some of my notes look like scribbles to anyone who isn't me. In the next video, we'll talk about the first step of the engineering design process, defining the problem. In the meantime, take a look at the Microbit Do Your Bit website and get to know the UN Global Goal themes for this year. I'll see you next time.